Thanks, Trevor. Here with us today we have the president of USEP, Alex Scavone, and vice president, Michael Hogue. VUCEP is something very relevant to all of us, seeing as every single one of us took part in the Vanderbilt Visions class during the first semester of freshman year, with each class equipped with its very own VUCEPTOR. So, could one of you give us a definition of what VUCEPT is and what you do around campus? I mean, there's definitely, um, there's no one correct uh, definition of VUCEPT. These are so many things that the organization does. But primarily, it's um, a peer mentor organization that um, is, you know, really enmeshed with the Commons Living and Learning Experience, and seeks to provide uh, first-year students um, with a student view supper that'll be involved in the student organization side. That's view sept, and then there also is um, they're paired with a faculty view supper as well. So that's kind of just the most classic definition of what view sept is. Um, and there's 92 uh, student view supers, and that's what um, because we're on the executive board along with. 11 other board members so that's really the when you talk about view set, view set specifically you're really speaking about you know those 92 student view sectors in the executive board okay all right awesome <laughs> so as you can see view sept is pretty involved around campus <laughs> okay all right um and as it turns out vanderbilt view sept is actually accepting applications so that you too can be a part of this awesome <laughs> organization so when are these applications due yeah, applications are due on January 29th um, at midnight, and they're on vanderbilt.edu slash VUCEPT. Um, so yeah, okay. it's an online app. Okay, all right. So who is eligible to be a VUCEPTOR? Um, uh, any current undergraduate students who are either first year, sophomores, or juniors are eligible to apply, and we really encourage um, students in any grade to really seek this out. I mean, you could be a first year student, and this could be the first organization that you really get involved with, or you could be a rising senior um, looking to give back for your final year. So uh, they're definitely, we have view from all grades. Um, view sectors really what our big reach to the board this year. Um, a major goal is to have view sectors that really represent the diversity of experience and cultures at Vanderbilt, and really to have view sectors kind of be a microcosm of the Vanderbilt community itself, because uh, the view sectors are the ones who are really responsible for facilitating that transition from high school to college life at Vanderbilt. So it's really important that they're able to relate to and meet the needs of the first year students. So uh, a big push uh, specifically this year is uh, our focus on, uh, it, uh, I guess, including more international students as well as international student perspectives in the organization. We have a new position, if you want to talk about our new position. Yeah, um, one of the new board positions this year is the international student relations position. Um, and that's basically, that was, that was created because um, we realized that there, you know, there was like a significant group on campus and in the first year class that, um, that like we weren't necessarily meeting their needs. Because you, like everyone remembers move-in day and everyone remembers like how busy and wonderful and terrifying <laughs> it is. Yes. Um, yes. But, you know, you know, it's, there's a pretty decent chance that like maybe you were driven here by your parents or you know, you had some, right. but you know, so their experience is just like way different. And so, um, so yeah, we're, we're looking into meeting those needs. Especially, um, um, just to add on to that, the perspectives that international students who are view sectors um, can bring to the view, I mean, the network of being a student view sector is one of the most spectacular things. There's so many diverse student, student leaders that you're going to be able to mesh with and network with. And if we can have international students as view who can share their perspectives, the ability of every other view to be able, I mean, it just, it'll increase, you know, their worldview and their ability to relate. I, it really just benefits everyone so much. So that's something that we're really excited about this year. We had um, a mixer for international students last week, and I think we had 11 students show up. And that was just really, I mean, that was so exciting for us to be Hi. able to kind of See this already. I mean, it's something we've been working on. Already, we're seeing you know the results kind of unfold. So it's definitely um, something that I mean, international students, if you're watching, this, <laughs> please apply or please, um, I mean, reach out to your own preceptor or go to our website saying we're really interested. In right. This year. That's an awesome idea. Mm -hmm. But okay, we have to get down to the nuts and bolts of it. <laughs> what is required of a view scepter in order to be one? Well, yeah. If you, All right. You want to talk there about are <laughs> some basics. So. Um, to apply and become a view scepter and to remain a view scepter, you need to keep a, um, a 3.0 GPA or above, um, and you can't. You, you need a clean conduct record. You can't be on uh, academic or disciplinary probation. Um, so those are just kind of the basics uh, because we do. 
know, these people are going to be role models to first year students. So, you know, um, so we do have some of those basic requirements. Um, required of a view subject, like task wise, um, there is a spring orientation, there is reading the commons reading, uh, there is fall training, there is common view week, which is that kind of a week and a half, two ish weeks orientation period. And then there are the weekly meetings in the first semester up until uh, Thanksgiving break. Um, as far as like, I guess you would say job skills wise, um, <laughs> that one's a lot less specific because there's, there's not one type of view scepter and there's definitely like not one type of good view scepter <laughs> at that. Um, so, you know, it goes back to that idea, that idea of, you know, we want to be representative of the campus. Um, and so, Basically, what is required of a view scepter? Um, an openness, an open-mindedness, because you're going to be um, kind of accommodating very, very different types of people. Uh, you're going to be working with a faculty view scepter. You're going to work really closely with them. Uh, so you have to be open to that. You have to be open to growing and developing, you know, like a lot of professional skills, you know, communication-wise and personal relationship-wise. Um, a big part of it is like, you know, the you got to want it. Um, <laughs> You know, that's being, you know, personally invested in this, in being a view scepter, in helping first year students, um, in reaching out, uh, being per somehow personally invested in that is basically going to, you know, if you're invested, you're going you're gonna to work at it, and you're going to work harder at it, and you're, you're going to make it a priority and do it well. All right. Um, just to touch on something that Michael uh, briefly mentioned that's really important is the idea of being open to really working with your faculty partner. Um, because it's something that's really unique to the, the view scepter experience is being paired with a faculty view scepter. Um, and a, so a big part of, um, I mean, a, an actual expectation uh, obviously is that you will, you know, plan these sessions. You're, you're going along with the Visions curriculum, but there's um, how you approach those mod modules uh, is really, that's something that's really left to the agency of the view scepters uh, themselves and working with their partners. So it's really important that view scepters are able to organize and plan effectively to really make sure that these sessions, that they really truly benefit their group because it's not saying that you can just you know, show up on the fly and lead a discussion of 18 first year students and the first time I try to do it, you know, you see this with wide eyes looking at you and you get more nervous than they are and they haven't even been on campus for a full day. So I mean it definitely requires um, being determined and motivated and also just really um, letting yourself to having a collaborative nature and really being eager to work with your faculty partner and, like you said, to, to improve yourself and to really improve your communication skills and the channels through which you communicate because, obviously, I mean, you're working with a faculty partner and then you're working with these 18 students, you know, within a visions group, but you're also interacting with them in so many other ways. Right. So it's really important, um, I think, that you're, you're really willing to grow as well, and to, especially um, to grow in the ways that you communicate with your group because that's really what you're doing, you're facilitating. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Well, those requirements do not seem too difficult at all. And I'm sure the benefits definitely outweigh the costs. What are they? <laughs> we learn, I can't even <laughs> like, begin to <laughs> list them all. It's, it, it, definitely, um, we won't be able to provide an exhaustive list, but the benefits to being a view scepter, I mean, I think it's one of the most unique and amazing opportunities that anyone at this university could really have. I mean, do you want to start? We can, I can go yeah. on. Yeah, <laughs> benefits to being a view scepter. Um, so, you know, the whole, you know, being a view scepter is not actually an easy thing to do. Um, that's why we have training. Uh, so we'll train you. Um, and, uh, you know, and it's the challenge that is one of the benefits. Um, you know, like not to be repetitive, but it does go back to, uh, you know, you're going to challenge the way you communicate. You're going to challenge the way you relate to people, you know. So on the one hand, you're really close in age to these yeah. people that you're being a role model for. Um, on the other hand, you know, you're going to have to at times, you know, be authoritative, take the lead, you know, be able to step back and be neutral about things. Um, so you're going to challenge yourself in that way. So like navigating that balance, because we call ourselves a peer mentorship organization, so part of the reward of being a view scepter is you're going to start to learn how to balance, you know, really nuanced relationships like that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the learning opportunity that being a view scepter provides um, is incredible. Uh, before I was speaking about the importance of your faculty view scepter and being able to work with them, but something that's so unique is 
you get selected for this position and you're being put, you have the title of being a peer mentor, so you are going to have the really rewarding experience of mentoring you know, 18 first year students and watching them adjust to their new lives and I think their successes you almost take on, like you really become involved and, and motivated and dedicated to helping them and that's, it's rewarding to you know, become something that's larger than you are and to step outside of yourself and you become more appreciative. Um, but I also, I mean, I learned so much about the diversity of, like, the students in my group just taught me so much about the types of students that are at Vanderbilt. I mean, and that's something that's, I think, within the 92 student view sectors, you are going to meet 92 of the most, like, incredible, amazing, involved students. And, like, they literally lead this campus. They're in every single organization. So it's really awesome to have that. But also, I mean, you're being a mentor, but you also do have this kind of unique experience of also being mentored because you're working with a faculty partner and you have the opportunity to kind of be, you know, equal with, you know, be almost like colleagues with a faculty partner, which is kind of crazy, I think, for a lot of us coming from high school and then, you know, <laughs> coming here. And they're, uh, I mean, they're from, all, uh, the faculty receptors are from all over, all four schools. We have some from the medical center. Like, there's definitely no one type of faculty view sector, just like there's no one type of student view sector. But you'll have this opportunity to work with them and to develop a really personal relationship with a faculty member that you don't necessarily always get within the classroom. And you'll, I mean, you, you yourself become more comfortable with faculty, like that's been huge for me. But at the same time, you also get, you really develop professionally, I think, by working with this faculty view sector. Um, my faculty view sector was really a big role model for me and like really helped shape me at Vanderbilt because, I mean, the expectations, you have to be, I guess you have to hold yourself more accountable because you can't, you know, be lazy or slack off. You can't, you know, be disorganized with your faculty view sector because there's a lot more pressure there. And I think that pressure, you, you end up, you rise to that, you, you really rise to the challenge. And I think you, be, you become better by working with someone who is much more comfortable in that professional realm and it reflects on you. So that's awesome. Yeah, the thing about faculty view scepters, you know, first of all, they're at Vanderbilt. So these are people who excel at, at what they do, like in their fields. And so that's really unique. You know, you can meet. Like literally world class right. faculty. Um, <laughs> which is, around, right, like, uh, which you, is really neat. Yeah. And, and, you know, they, they become faculty view scepters because they want to do it. And so these are people who are really invested in students. That means they're invested in you as well. And so they're going to they're gonna help you. They're going to relate to you. Um, they're they're going to support you, which is really neat. Yeah. I mean, I guess some other, but there's so benefits, many other benefits. Yeah. But, um, Move in early. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, there's the simple ones like that. The, the, <laughs> The I Heart VU shirts. It's that's oh, that's yeah, exclusive. That is the you know, big that. benefit in my book. I like those. <laughs> <laughs> those are pretty. <laughs> Something else that I think um, I really gained from the experience, like it helped me. I mean, I think view scepters are oftentimes seen as kind of like this representation of Vanderbilt. I mean, it's part of it. It's the shirts. It's the way they present themselves. <laughs> But um, another big part of that was view scepters. Was the way that I found my place on campus. Um, I really thought. I mean, I came. I did it. I applied my first year, so you know I was coming back. I pretty much had just, you know, fresh out of the Commons experience, was now going in to help be a part of it from the other side. And I think that um, by doing so, I really, you know, I had to critically think about like what I wanted to do at Vanderbilt and what all these things meant to me that I was supposed to be, you know, teaching or like having my group discover. So you and yourself, I mean, I became more confident, um, you know, not only leading the session but just like with who I was. Um, on a personal level because you're really, uh, you're put in a role to like, I think that's really unique um, and it is, you know, there's a lot of visibility with it and I think that the personal development that you get from doing something and from helping, I mean part of it's helping others, part of it's learning from others and then a big part of it is also um, learning, you know, your own strengths and weaknesses as you, you know, you lead these groups. You just, you learn a lot about yourself in the process which is really, Interesting. I mean, the ViewSet board and everyone involved with the Commons and the DOC is really invested in helping to develop the student view sectors. So it's, um, I mean, as much as a lot of it, people, you know, they initially they want to be a view sector because they want to help other people, and they don't even realize until afterwards how much the program <laughs> has helped them. And I think right. that's, and I mean, besides all that, you get it, you get to have all this like, development and growth, and you get to have fun too. It's a really fun, special experience to help, you know, these first year students who are so excited to come to Vanderbilt, but they're so nervous too. Um, <laughs> it's really rewarding and you're, it's enjoyable too. So I, I mean, I think it's awesome. Obviously we do, <laughs> we love it, but. I think like a common <laughs> phrase um, that's thrown around in like application speak and organization speak is the idea 
of um, making a difference. People want to make <laughs> a difference. They want to do something tangible. And there's a situation where you're going to be in a room with a faculty partner and also 18 first year students um, who have their whole university career ahead of them. And that's, like, I, that's a yeah. big opportunity right there. Yeah, definitely. Wow, that is a lot of benefits. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, we don't do that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so Alex, I think you touched on this, but I was going to ask, there has to be something about ViewSet that drew each of you to become so involved with it, to become the president and the vice president. So why did you all choose to join ViewSet, I guess? Um, I mean, it is something that I kind of said, um, realizing how much the organization gave to me um, is what kind of motivated me to become involved uh, further than I already was. You know, I started out, well, I wanted to be a ViewSopter my first year because, like I said, I, you know, I actually really didn't feel like I fit in at Vanderbilt and I didn't, I felt like there was stereotypes that I didn't necessarily feel like really applied to me or accurately describe me. And I wasn't completely satisfied with my experience, but um, I realized that ViewSop was an opportunity to kind of um, channel all of the experiences that I went through and everything that I learned from not necessarily having you know the best first semester into making a difference into hopefully helping others have an experience that I hope was better than mine and to share my experiences um, but ultimately I mean I ended up learning so much from them I mean I think my view septies helped me more than I helped them <laughs> and then I mean after I think realizing you know, how much confidence I gained from the from the organization and just literally the level of personal growth I mean I matured so much I was, you know, a sophomore, I was only a year older than my ViewSep Ds, but I really, I couldn't, you know, act immaturely, like I had to be a role model, and so I saw myself really maturing and developing, and um, I think seeing those positive changes in myself, um, that really motivated me to become a member of the executive board, because I wanted to give back more, I, I thought, you know, oh, I could help 18 first year students, now I want to help, you know, 1600 first year students. Um, and I really wanted to become uh, more involved with this organization that, I, like I said before, really was so much bigger than myself. Um, and my year on the executive board was you know, absolutely incredible. And uh, I mean, I don't think I would be close to the person I am. I don't think I would love my Vanderbilt experience half as much if I didn't have that involvement. Uh, it was just, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, I've been able to work so intimately with you know, faculty and staff members, which really, again, um, helps prepare you for the real world. You learn so many of these, you know, transferable skills um, that really do have a real world application. I mean, there are things that when I'm, you know, filling out job applications and they like meet the requirements, I'm like, these are things that I think I've gained through these. You know, all my examples are coming from these and all my interviews, um, which is a good thing. So it means it's it awesome. And then I think ultimately, I mean, I was on the, the, one of the training co-chairs last year, so I had a lot of exposure to the student view sectors. Um, and I really was inspired by the student view sectors to seek to become the president of the organization. Because I, I mean, there are 92 people who I think are doing, you know, one of the most noble things at this school, which is helping the first year students, you know, and like being passionate about the first year experience when they could blow them off. I mean, Commons is a different campus, you know, you're an upper class when you have plenty of things to do, but the fact that you want to go back and help out, you know, the newest members and to kind of continue on, like the legacy of uh, your university is so incredible. And I was just really um, inspired, especially when you hear view septers tell these like success stories of their view septies. It's incredible. I mean, they literally they light up when they're talking about you know the littlest things about having someone who maybe um, is a little quieter in their sessions, you know, start to contribute. And to see the view septers themselves develop and to become so excited about the successes of their own students um, really just you, it continually renewed you know, my faith in the organization and I guess my like ability to see how how incredible it has been. Um, so that, I mean, I think the view sectors are real, have really become for me the main reason to become so involved with this organization. Okay, my story <laughs> a little bit different. So when I was a first year student, went through view sept and Vanderbilt Visions, um, I didn't have a particularly bad experience, so it wasn't like I wanted to improve it for you know future classes. It wasn't that I had a particularly good experience either where I wanted to continue the legacy. Um, I like a pretty neutral uh, experience when I was a first year student myself. Uh, but when, when spring came around, I was in, I, I really didn't do anything except study on campus. I didn't do organizations. I didn't like do much of it like I, I studied, that's what I did. And so I figured like, well, I got, I got to do something. <laughs> um, and ViewSep seemed uh, like a fairly intense organization, which I appreciated. Um, 
you know, it, it took itself very seriously. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really close with uh, the, the kind of faculty administration, if you will. Um, and so that, that kind of drew me to view stuff, so I figured I'd apply. May as well, <laughs> lose. Just try it out. And, you know, um, casual. So yeah, and then I, I was selected and I went through with it. And um, when I was a view scepter myself as a sophomore, uh, it was like, it, it was really challenging. And like, as I would go throughout the semester, I would keep realizing things I want to do better. Um, things that I wanted to like improve on and work on, areas where I needed to grow, um, and so by the end of the semester, like I, I had learned a lot about myself because I think, especially for Vanderbilt students, it's you know we excel really well in high school, and that's why we're you know that's a large part why we're here, <laughs> um, and then this is a different playing field, and so you know some of some of like your weaknesses some of the areas you need to work on some of the ways you need to grow as like as a leader and in you know your your personal skills uh, those became more apparent to me um, and so I applied to be on the exec board and I was the editor of um, the co-editor of viewpoint which is the the magazine that all first-year students get um, on move in day and it has all the information they'll need to know it shares the survival other guide to Vanderbilt. Exactly. So yeah. and so, um, oh editing editing that last year was one of the most rewarding things I've ever done because um, I got to work with uh, Nina Varnka she's the assistant dean of the commons um, so we got to work together on that and it was basically you know thinking of what do I want my message to a whole class of people to be? What content do I need to do? Or what content do I need to gather? How do I need to arrange it? You know, how do I, how do I get the messages across? And so that, that was just endlessly fascinating. Um, and, and that was one of it. So it just, like as I kept doing things, like it kept me coming back for more. Like it was something a little different the next time around. Um, and so that's what inspired me to go ahead and apply for the presidential team because I figured I mean, I'm already in it this far, <laughs> so I mean, it was something that I love doing. Something else uh, for Michael too. He's um, he's the vice president, but he's also the co-chair of That's a true. new position, which is first year student family relations. So I don't know oh. if you want to. Yeah. So that <laughs> also a new position. Um, the other co-chair is another board member, um, and so the ideas behind that position um, were really. You know, we realized that ViewCept as an organization, the Mineral Visions Program, Common View, did a lot of things, did a, does a lot of things. Um, but one of the things it wasn't really, really doing as much was like the outreach part of it. So, you know, approaching students and families and giving a face to the Commons experience and giving a face to ViewCept. You know, this is something that they're going to be immersed in from, from day one. Um, you know, especially in Common View Week, where they're you know you're almost with your vision group <laughs> constantly, and then you know the weekly meetings. So this is this is a this is a large part of you know your experience. Um, and so we thought, why don't we give, you know, why why don't we like let people know it's coming? Why don't we like make that part of their expectations of the common experience? Uh, why don't we let parents know what their students are going through? Yeah. So there's a thought behind that, and that was also like a a big drawing factor uh, for the vice presidential position like specifically is what is that it had that right. that that set to it. Wow, that's mm -hmm. awesome. That sounds like so, so many great ideas this <laughs> year. Goodness. Okay. Busy. <laughs> yeah. So I have to ask, do you a, do either of you have any favorite view set stories maybe that you want to share with us? If not, I don't want to put you on the spot. I feel bad. <laughs> um, I guess one of my favorite views up stories for me is um, when I, I actually, um, I stayed in Nashville over the summer and when I came, um, I had an apartment I was living in but unfortunately, you know, the lease, I couldn't move in like when I got here right away so I had to find a place to live because um, my job really wanted me to start in the middle of May which is just not a normal time for internships to start <laughs> but um, I had to come back and uh, I was um, my faculty, Bicep, and I were, I think we were meeting um, for lunch. I mean, I think we were kind of planning a reunion for our group. And I mentioned to her, you know, I just heard, you know, I need to be back earlier than I thought I would. I don't know what to do. And, you know, she offered to let me stay with her. And I think that, I mean, I knew how strong our relationship was, but that really, um, I think that A, just demonstrates, you know, how amazing the faculty members at Vanderbilt are, like, really how invested they are <laughs> in the students. Um, but it was a really, uh, I mean, it just meant so much to me. It was saying that, you know, maybe it might have been li little for her. I lived with her for a week. But at the same time, um, to be able to realize that, um, you know, I developed such a strong personal relationship 
with a faculty member who I would not have met otherwise, you know, I had never taken a class with her, was really awesome. I mean, I remember telling my friends and everyone was like, how did you end up doing that? Like, that's so funny. And I, I mean, you just really explained that the bond that you form uh, in leading your vision sessions is something that like really carries on. So that's something that I think, I mean, it's a little funny story that I thought was cool. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, one of the things I can think of, when I was a sophomore view scepter, my faculty partner, um, she is a nurse in the she yeah she's a nurse in the children's hospital, um, and at the time, it was during spring orientation that it happened. But she had she had recently had a baby, she had this this infant child, and so our group had a mascot, which was really <laughs> you know great for morale. Um, yeah. but, you know it, it was fun to like really um, like personalize these people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Wow, that's cool. I that's neat. Other <laughs> funny things that happened to our, I guess it happened to our executive board a lot last year. Um, we, we'll do a lot of communication with the view scepters over the summer, and so they may not necessarily know the faces of the executive board yet because it, it functions, I guess, a little bit of an off, you know, the exec board really kicks up when visions end. Um, and we had a few funny emails from some student view scepters who would, you know, email executive board members with the title like Mrs. or Professor. So, like that's always something funny. Like, being reminded that when you're not a, guess, a student view scepter, you suddenly become a faculty member. So, I think this is an added perk if you want to, you know, join view scepter and become an executive board member. <laughs> that's great. Okay, well thank you so much Alex and Michael for joining us. Um, as, as you heard Vanderbilt, USEP is an amazing organization that you should most definitely become a part of. Yeah. And you can do that by applying by January 29th at midnight. So don't miss out. Back to you, Trevor. <laughs>